again, we magnify you today. Again, we esteem you today because truly you are worthy. Not because of what you've done, not because of what you are doing, and not because of what you will do, but you are worthy because you are God. And so we magnify your name, God, and we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit whom you've given to us to give us the uh, illumination and revelation that are contained in your word for us. We thank you that he empowers us to do those things which you have called us to do and predestined us to do and preordained us to do here in the earth realm. So God, now by your spirit, instruct us in your word. Teach us that we will know, be, and do according to all you have preordained and predestined for us to do as the church in this world today. We give you praise and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God that agree said amen. Amen Amen again. One more time say amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. To our internet audience, thank you so much for tuning in today. We're about to go into our study for today. So grab your Bible, your note-taking materials, and let's get to the Word of God to inquire of His Spirit what He wants us to know today. Thank you for tuning in. Let's give our internet guests a big warm clap of welcome. Hallelujah. We started these teachings, and and, uh, we started these teachings about three weeks ago, and this is the fourth one, and probably this is the last installment on this, but we started these teachings four weeks ago, and we we searched the scriptures because we were, we wanted to understand and know if God was really on board with us being successful, say amen to that. And we searched the scriptures, and we found out that God is very much on board with us being successful. Not only is he on board with us being successful, he has done everything that he is required to do to ensure our success. I wish I had a witness. The idea, though, the idea, in order to be successful, that means the person that desires to be successful successful must develop a new way of thinking. I wish it. Say amen. Uh, and, and that means that in a new way of thinking, you got to approach things differently. you got to do things differently. And because, because people who are successful don't do the same things all the time. Sometimes to be successful, you got to cut loose some people. And, and for a lot of us, sometimes you got to shut your mouth. Because some of us just, just we, and it's not that we're talking about the right thing. We're always talking about the wrong thing. Some of us are more interested in having a title than being successful. I wish I had a witness. So if you got your title, if you call yourself evangelist, this or prophetess, this is death like that, and everybody clap, that's your reward. I'd rather have the Spirit of God working in my life, let Him have the title, and I get the reward. I wish I had a witness. Glory be to God. Say amen to that. So we returned. Then we, 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 we ventured on and we, we looked at we looked at what has Christ done to ensure our success. And we looked at it and we found out that the grace of God is a powerful thing. We defined the grace of God and we said the grace of God was, is, is defined as God's unmerited favor, which it is. Say amen to that. But we also discovered that the grace of God is God using his ability on my behalf to do what I can't do for myself. And whatever God does is according to his grace, and it is unmerited. I mean, it don't cost me anything. I did not have to do anything for it. I did not have to beg for it. All I have to do is believe it, and it is mine. Give me two witnesses. Say amen to that. So we looked at that, and we found out that Christ became poor so we could become rich. I wish I had a witness. And so since Christ did all, he, 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 he ensures us through his word that by his poverty, we can be made rich. If we do some things different, if our thought process is different, which means our reaction and our actions will be different. Say amen to that. Can't be successful doing the same old thing, especially if it's not adding up. I wish I had a witness. Plus, I, 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 and this is a new one. I won't charge you for this, and I don't think. I do believe that since God is always so progressive, say amen to that. Many times God is always leading us sometimes, and he changes things. He, he remaneuvers things, and he's, he sets up things differently. But we get so complacent in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, what's it, in the, in the, we get so complacent in complacency that sometimes when God shifts and make a move, we're so comfortable where we are, we don't want to go. I wish I had a witness. That's the same thing happened to Israel, you know, they had happened to Israel when Moses came to get them out of Egypt. They really didn't want to go. I wish I had a witness. But they had to go because Egypt was not promised to them. I wish I, it was the land of Canaan that was promised to them. Sometime to be successful. Not sometimes. To be successful, you're going to have to leave Egypt and go to what God has promised. I wish I had a witness. So today we're going to look at 
Another installment, we use a very familiar passage of Scripture. So we've seen the grace of God in action. We've seen what Christ has done. And we've seen all the things that he has done to ensure that the church be successful. Say amen to that. Uh, all right. Now, so and as we stand here on this new year, and it's not, the, the idea of these, these teachings the last four months are not coincidental. It's not just a coincidence. It's God prepping us. Because we need to have a new, uh, a new perspective going into the new year. The idea of these teachings is to help us understand through the word of God. Say through the word of God. Not through what I believe in my perspective. I've taught you directly from the word of God what God has to say about your success. Now the perspective of your success as you move into the new year is going to be based on what you do with the teachings you've received. I wish I had a witness. Say amen to that. I don't know what you're going to do, but I know what I'm going to do with mine. Say amen to that. God got something for me. I plan to get it. I wish I had a witness. That's the beauty of that's the beauty of my relationship with God. You know, you can be scared and not move, and I'm gonna be happy for you. But I'm gonna move. Amen. I wish I had a witness. Say amen to that. Some of you are gonna be probably be in line for no. Some of you are in line for promotions. You scared because there's uh there's too much responsibility and all that kind of stuff. And you you talking to the wrong people. You think I should take this? You ain't gonna take no. You never ask anybody about a promotion who ain't getting promoted. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Same minute. They're always seeking advice from people who are not going anywhere, who are not doing anything, who not have any kind of success. I'm going to go ask them what you think about this. Man, you ask a dummy something, they're going to give you a dumb answer. I wish I had a witness. Say amen to that. I didn't call anybody a dummy. I was just making an observation. So when y'all go out and talk about me, just say he didn't call anybody a dummy. He just made an observation. He just used a general word. Say amen to that. Have to say that around here. <clears throat> say amen to that. So today we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it from this perspective or from this subject. Say amen to that. Uh, reconcile, reconcile and righteous. Reconcile and righteous. And there's one other I didn't mention in the subject because it just didn't fit. But we'll look at today what Christ has done to ensure, what God has done to ensure that we are reconciled and that we are righteous. Say amen to that. Now today, today you're going to be, all your past whatever failures, whatever you call them, are going to be ripped away from you. You're not going to be able to claim them anymore. I wish I had a witness. The only reason you're not moving because you're claiming and holding on too much of the past. I wish I had a witness. And that's the same thing happened to Israel. When, they, when God was taking them through the wilderness to teach them how to follow him, all they could think about was well, back in Egypt we did this. And back in Egypt we had that. Back in Egypt we did this. Back in Egypt you were a slave. Say amen to that. Who can be happy about a slave? But see, something happens. When you come out of slavery and follow God, that old mindset has to be re-channeled, had to be retooled so you can think differently. I wish I had a witness. So for today's teaching, turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to begin around verse number 18 as Paul writes this second letter to the church at Corinth. And I'm glad it's an epistle because it's, these instructions are for the church. Say the church. Anybody in here that's a part of the family of Christ called the church? Is there anybody in here? Well, that's about four people. I guess the rest of y'all just are club members, huh? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says, as he writes this second letter to the church of Corinth, which implies they had uh, wrote, written him about some things concerning this idea of being reconciled and being righteous. He says, and all things are of God who has reconciled us uh, to himself by Jesus Christ. And then he says, and hath given to us the what? Ministry of Reconciliation. Next verse. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of word. So there's a ministry of reconciliation, then there's the word of reconciliation. I wish I had a witness. Next verse. Now then, we are ambassadors. That's in the middle. We Now then, we are ambassadors for who? For the one who reconciled us. Say amen to that. You don't take off on your own. Woo! Say amen to that. We got so many self-appointed officials in God's house. Everybody wants to appoint themselves to do something. Everybody wants to ordain themselves to do something. Everybody wants to claim a title, claim this, claim that. You didn't save yourself. 
You didn't reconcile yourself. You had no power to do this. Stop, 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 stop it. <laughs> Say amen to that. We have become so fame oriented that I'd rather have a title. A title makes me feel like I'm somebody. God has already told you you're somebody. You don't need, you will never feel like you're somebody because God has already told you. You either believe that or you don't. People who don't believe have to feel. People who believe just accept and keep rolling. I wish I had a witness. Now then, we are ambassadors for who? Christ. As though God did beseech us or beg you or ask you or inquire of you by us. And then he says, we pray you in Christ's place, be ye reconciled unto God. Next verse. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Any righteous people in here? Everybody ought to be screaming to the top of their lung right now. Hallelujah. Because the righteousness has nothing to do with where you come from. It has nothing to do with what you've done. It has nothing to do with where you've been. If you got out of jail last night and you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you are the righteousness of God. I wish I had a witness. Glory be to God. So today we're going to look at reconcile and righteous. Reconcile and righteous. Again, Paul writes this letter probably in response, not probably, but in response to some questions they had. Say amen to that. I find today that many believers are also have a lot of questions about what God says about them. Because, because we're living in a society now where if I can get a whole lot of people to agree with what God says. It's kind of difficult for me to believe what God says. You know, well, you know, nobody ever told me I was this. Nobody ever told me I was that. Nobody, everybody said I couldn't do this. And everybody said I was. You don't need that. Don't worry about that. Because people tell you what they can tell you. And that's all they can tell you. I wish I had a witness. But when you meet Jesus, say amen to that. Once you become a believer, then what Christ says about you or what the Word of God says about you is what you should believe. I wish I had a witness. Now, now when you start to believe what the Word of God says about you and you begin to act out what the Word of God says about you, you're going to find plenty of people have an issue with that. I wish I had a witness because, because people think you need to pay some kind of penalty for your past sins. And, and, and they don't feel you're out of the way of your past sins until the penalty justifies what they think you ought to pay. If you try to live out somebody else's penance on you, you'll go to the grave. Say amen to that. Because only sacrilegious religious people try to make you believe that you need to do something in their sight, then they'll forgive you, and then that makes God all right with you. I wish I had a witness. Y'all are too quiet and say amen to that. Some, you know, church folk, some church folk do that. That's why I stopped being a church person a long time ago. You know, say amen, somebody comes in church and they may not dress just like you. They may not look just like you. And because they don't dress like you and look like you, you don't want to sit by them. She don't need to be coming here looking like that. He don't need to be coming here looking like that. The Bible says whosoever will. Amen. Say amen to that. You didn't always have a dress that looked like that. There was a time when you wore something that showed everything too. Don't, don't, don't clown on somebody else now because they're just learning. Won't you be a help to them instead of a hindrance? I wish I had a witness. And you would be wearing a dress like that too, but something happened between the biscuits and gravy that just ain't happening. Say amen to that think people ought to come to church. They don't talk right. They don't do this. And nobody does anything right. That's why Jesus paid it all. I'm glad he shed his blood because I don't talk right all the time. I may not look right all the time. I may not think right all the time. But the blood of Jesus is still on my life. I wish I had a witness. So Paul says in this, I only got a few minutes. So God, Paul says, he says, and all things are of God who has done what? Reconcile us to himself. That's a powerful word. Reconcile means to change. It means to change something or to change the, the perspective of something or to change, just to change something. So, so the, 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 we needed a change. Say amen to that. Because the world was headed spiraling downtown, downtown sin. Say amen to that. And, and, and was liking the direction it was going in. Say amen to that. But God did not want us to end up like that. Say amen to that. Somebody clap. Do something. 
So he says, and all things, he says, all things are of who? There is nothing that happens, nothing that moves, nothing that does anything. The little hummingbird humming around the tree, all things are of God. Same in that. I don't care what your life is like. I don't care what you believe or what you've decided to believe. All things are of God. Say amen to that. Nothing moves, nothing happens without God having his finger on it. Some of you evangelists need to understand that. All things are of God. I wish I had a witness. He says, and has, record, or has changed our position himself. He did it himself. I wish I had a witness. He says, and how did he do it? By Jesus Christ. That's the grace of God again. Say the grace of God. That, that's again, that's that unmerited favor. God changed my circumstance. God changed my situation. God changed, and actually he gave me a mechanism by which I could change. Say amen to that. Didn't cost me anything. Didn't have to pay for it. it, it I, just, I don't give my tithes to pay God back. I give my tithes because I've been changed. I wish I had a witness. I give because I've been changed. I don't give to pay God back because that, that little 10% that God requires out of my earnings, you think that would pay God back? You think that would give make, make it justifiable for God to, to have done what he No, man. You could borrow on your house and still wouldn't pay him back. Say amen to that. I give and I tithe without having to be begged, without having to be asked, because I've been reconciled, because I've been changed, and because I've been made different in my thinking. And it's all because God did it through the person of Jesus Christ. Say amen to that. So to change me, God changed Jesus. Let that sit there for a minute. See, somebody had to, somebody had to change. Now, for, so for me, to, so if it was left up to God that I take the punishment that requires my change, I couldn't do it. Say amen to that. Now, rightfully so, I should have been punished. But say amen to that. But see, sin can't be punished by sin and then give the change that you're looking for. I wish I had a witness. Say a minute. So sin has to have something innocent to be punished so that the change can come about. I wish I That's what kept Adam and Eve uh, uh, from being destroyed by God. He killed an animal. Say amen to that. And took the skin, the skin of the animal and covered their nakedness. They couldn't stay in the garden, but that God didn't destroy them. Say amen to that. So he says in the text, he says, all things are of God who had, say had, past tense. God reconciled us before we even got here. I wish I had a witness. God changed us. God did everything he was supposed to do to make this possible before we even got here. Before I came on the scene, my reconciliation was in place. I wish, all I had to do was find it. That, that's, when we get down the line, we're going to see that's what the real church is about today. That's one of the things we need to get a different perspective on. You know what? You know, all of us come here every Sunday. Say amen to that. Who have you, who have you given a word of reconciliation to? Mm -hmm. See, you don't sing the word of reconciliation. You speak it to somebody. Say a minute. And you speak it because you've been reconciled. You want somebody else to taste a little bit that's that, you, that you have received. I wish I had a witness. It says, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus. And then he says, and has given to us a what? Ministry of reconciliation. Ministry has to do with service. Say a minute that. I, it amazes me, and I don't know why I'm talking about this today, but it amazes me how everybody wants a title. But no title is servant. Mm -mm. You can call me anything else, but when you say servant, something negative popped up in my head. Say amen to that. Because I equate service with being a slave. Well, say amen to that. And see, I don't want to be linked to slavery because that's a negative thing. It is if you're looking at it from one perspective. But if you're looking at it from God's perspective, the same minute that Paul said, I'm a slave, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Now, if you got to be a slave to somebody, if you got to be a slave of something, let it be to Jesus Christ. Same minute that. Hallelujah. So he says, this idea of ministry is a service that we provide, uh, that we minister to people. Say amen to that. And that's sometimes where the church is missing it. Say missing it. Say missing it. Say I'm missing it because all my friends know I go to church and I have never ministered the word of reconciliation to any of them.
Hallelujah. He says, now this reconciliation process, like I said, it happened before we even got here. In Romans chapter 5, verse number 10, write that down. Romans 5, verse number 10, the word of God says, for if when we were enemies, say enemies, See, not too many people would do things to change the concept or change the perspective of their enemy. He says, but for if then we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. I wish I had a wish. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his death. So there's two things happened through this reconciliation that God did through Jesus. One, we were reconciled, we were changed. Not only that, were we changed, we were saved. The idea of the word saved has to do with we, we have the opportunity to escape sin, hell, and all of its consequences through the person and through the death of the man, Jesus Christ. Say, I'm reconciled and saved. Somebody ought to shout right now. Say amen to that. Glory be to God. So now, verse number, y'all all right? So in verse number 19, he says in the text, to wit, this is how God did it. He says, God was in Christ. Watch this now. Reconciling the world unto himself uh, 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 by Jesus Christ and hath given to us, now it says, the ministry of reconciliation. Did I just read that? Ministry of reconciliation, all right? So now he tells us, he tells us that. Uh, now, this, this process is really not too peculiar if you understand New Testament living or theology uh, and Old Testament theology. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was still around. He just was not permanent. He would come as dispatched by God to perform whatever God needed on the planet. Once that performance was done, once he had done that, then he would go back to where he was. Because it was not yet time for him to take up permanent occupancy on the planet. He couldn't come before Jesus. He had to come after Jesus. And Jesus hadn't come yet because the preparation, the preparation had been made in eternity past. It just hadn't manifested itself in eternity present. I wish I had a witness. So the idea in it says God was in Christ. God, God is never in us like God. He is always God, the spirit that's in us. I wish I so Jesus when Jesus comes to the earth, he is actually the first man that ever walked on earth who really loved God that was actually filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Everybody else, he came, did his business, and went back. Jesus was the first man to ever hit the planet, born just like I was born, bled like I bled, walked and talked, ate fish and grits just like me. But he was the only man on the planet that experienced the infilling or the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost. Say amen to that. Why? Then why? Why did Jesus have to be filled with the Holy Spirit after all he Jesus? Because he gave up divinity. Say amen to that. He gave up divinity. He gave up divinity that existed in heaven. He couldn't bring that divinity to earth because that would be illegal. Because I'm not divine. Say amen to that. And anybody who's dying here is not born divine. I wish I had them. They're born human. But the Spirit of God comes into them when they accept Christ, and then they have the divine nature of God inside them. So the Bible says God was in Jesus doing what? Changing. Changing the world. Why? For himself. Why? It had got out of sorts. Now, when God thinks about the world, he's not thinking about the trees and the birds he created. Because the birds, the trees, and everything that God created that makes up the earth, the waters, and stuff, they always do exactly as creation design. We're the only thing that bucks against our creative design. Say a minute. We're the only one. Okay, how much scripture we get, how much learning we get, we still buck against. I, the, the divine nature that is in us. So the idea says, so God says in the word, he says, God was in Christ Jesus doing what? Changing the world for himself. He was changing the world. He was changing the people of the world. Why? Because he wanted the people of the world to come back to him. It's hard to understand that I was created to be with God. That's the only reason I was created. Say amen to that. There's a whole lot of us. We all different colors, all different races. Some of us got short hair, long hair, no hair, big feet, small feet, crooked feet, corn feet, callous feet, all kinds of... I wish I had a witness. We allow how we're made to be a difference in who we're supposed to be. Say amen to that. But I was, I was created... There's a song of Christ saying, I was created to worship. Say amen to that. God doesn't care what color the worship comes out of. He just wants worship. He doesn't care what color the, the, the praise comes from. He just wants praise. 
He's not looking at the color of the vessel that prays. He's looking at the heart of the vessel that prays. And if that heart has him in it. Well, do the best you can with that. Hey, see me. So in verse number 19, he says, so God was in Christ. He was in Christ by the Holy Spirit. And do what? Changing the world. Giving people an opportunity to come back. Say me to that. So when you come, you don't come back to church. You come back to God. It's almost like the prodigal son. When he came to himself, he got up and went home. Say amen to that. See, he can't. No matter where you drift to, no matter where you drift or migrate from, no matter what you do while you're out there, when you come to the idea of that text is he had an encounter with who he really was. And when he had an encounter with who he really was, he looked at what he was doing and what he had become and said, this ain't me. And the Bible says he came to himself and then he got up and went back to what he was supposed to be. I wish I had a witness. So he says God did it that way. He did it. Uh, uh, and, then, and he says uh, <clears throat> reconciling the world unto us. Then he says, watch this, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Now this is going to blow you away. This is going to literally blow you away. Say me to that. God didn't do this because you were a sinner. Were. Say me to that. He, the Bible says he did it and he didn't impute your trespasses unto you. Mm-hmm. Uh, let that sit there for a minute. That, that's a minute. Impute has, say impute. Impute has to do with hold against something. Say a minute to that. Watch, let me say like, uh, it's like you and your cousin Jody had a fight 30 years ago. Say a minute to that. You done got saved now, but you refuse to forgive Jody. So, so that, uh, that refusal to forgive Jody keeps you from sharing Jesus with Jody, which means you're holding G Jody's trespasses against him, but God didn't hold your trespasses against you. I wish I had a witness. See, if God would have held our trespasses against us, he never would have put himself in a position to reconcile them. See, see, see my sin would have blocked him from doing what he really wanted to do. So he says, God says, I tell you what I'll do. I tell you what, I just won't hold it against you. What a concept. Because if I hold it against you, I can't do what I need to do to make it feasible for you to come back to me. So I'm not going to count your trespasses. You did them, I'm just not going to count them. Yeah, you did them, but I'm not going to count them. So, so watch this now, watch this. So Jesus, say amen to that. Jesus came to save his people for their sins, say amen to that. But, 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 but he didn't save them because you were, he didn't save us because you were a sinner. He saved us because his death, say amen to that. God did not count our sins and trespasses against us. That's why he could come and condemn sin and not condemn me. It's quiet. See, this is, this is the beautiful thing about understanding scripture. Say amen to that. See, I don't care how many red dresses you wear, how many white dresses you wear, how many black suits you wear. I don't care if you sit in the deacon corner singing the choir, do the usher thing. Say amen to that. That, that carries no weight. That carries no weight in heaven. If you want to sing the choir, we could sure use it. Need about 900 more people. Yeah, we could use it. But don't think your singing has something to do with your reconciliation. Your singing has to do it because you have been reconciled. Now you want to participate in the act. I wish I had a witness. So the text. So he says in the text now. He says, now, he says, he says, now so he says, uh, not, con not imputing that trespass, I trespass against them. And then he says, and has committed what? Unto us the what? Word. Ministry, then word. Ministry, then word. Ministry, then word. So the word of reconciliation is the what? Word of God. If you want to cite it for a better way, it's Jesus. Say amen. Jesus is the word of reconciliation. It's because of Jesus that we have the opportunity to change. It's because of what Jesus did that we can change. And say amen to that. Now watch this. God doesn't change us. He just puts the product in place to give us the opportunity to change ourselves. Say amen to that. So he says in the text, and have, see now, so, so it's almost like, so God, you mean tell me you, you, you made it feasible for me to be reconciled? Yeah, got that. And through, through, through the death and blood of Jesus, yeah, you got that. And so you changed me. First you gave me a ministry of reconciliation. Yeah, yeah. 
That don't mean pastoring. That means serving. He says, now, nah, so now, nah. then, 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 okay, so you, you did that, then you give me a service of reconciliation. And then the next verse, you said, now you give me a word. So I'm supposed to serve the word to help other people become reconciled. That's exactly right. See, see, God can't just give you something to serve, give you a job of serving without something to serve. Say amen to that. So the word becomes what you serve people. Say amen to that. Now, you don't have to be a preacher to serve to do that. You don't have to be called a preach to do that. You don't have to be called a pastor. Wait a minute. See, because under reconciliation, that's me too. It just so happened my call of reconciliation is pastoring. Say amen to that. A lot of you can't do what I do. Say amen to that. So don't think you got to elevate. I just know God coming to preach. No, he called you first to serve. Serve who? Now, watch. that service is not for folk who already changed. The service is for them who have yet to be changed. Say amen to that. So while you in here witnessing to each other and all, that ain't, that's not the, that's not the idea. Yeah. Sit around and talk about the word of God for five hours and then around my house there's like 900 people who ain't saved. I should say in my house who ain't saved. I wish I had a witness. Glory be to God. Now in Romans 3.24, write this down. Romans 3.24, he says, being justified freely by his grace. There it is again. That's God's unmerited favor. Did all of this, what did it cost us? Nothing. What did we have to pay for it? Nothing. What did we have to do for it? Nothing. All we have to do was receive it. That's the grace of God. Isn't that a powerful thing? Who do you know on this planet ever did anything for you that didn't try to get something out of you? Everybody got an angle. Everybody got a scheme. Say amen to that. God said, I don't play like that. I am so bad. I can reconcile you and not charge you because I'm God. That, that, that's a good clap over there. Yeah, yeah, that's a good clap over there. Now everybody else stunned. Say amen to that. Being justified freely by his grace through the what? Redemption that is where? That word redemption has to do with paying a ransom. Say amen to that. This is a news flash. Say news flash. Over here in the corner, y'all say news flash. Y'all say news flash. Say news flash. Say news flash. Over there, way in the back, say news flash. Now everybody together, say news flash. News flash. That wasn't everybody. Quiet joining. Everybody together, say news flash. Here's the news flash. Here is the top ten thing on the paper today. Say amen to that. The price for our redemption was not set by the devil. It was set by God. He ain't going to let no devil charge him for what belongs to him. You already belong to God. I ain't going to pay for what belongs to me. If a price going to be set, I'll set it. Because no price the enemy was set for you would be worthy of you. I wish I had three people. Ain't no devil. No de 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 he, you know why he couldn't set a price for you? He don't own you. He never owned you. Adam, Adam gave him the title deed to the earth, not to you. You got to know the word to understand that. The devil used to own me. Ain't no devil used to own you. Come on. Say amen to that. Might have been a quarter gin, but it wasn't no devil. Might have been a joint or two, but it wasn't no devil. Say amen to that. Because he's been defeated. I ain't going to be owned by somebody who's been defeated. I wish I, Luke 10, 19 tells me I have power over the devil. So if I got power over the devil, he can't own me. I wish I had two witnesses. So the idea of the text, Romans says, Romans 3 says, then being justified. Say justified. justified. Say, say justified. justified. One more time. Make me happy. Say. Justified. So that means I've been pronounced not guilty. Right. Watch it. Here's the big thing. It say, I stood in the court of God. Say it. Say, I stood in the court of God. And I was guilty. But he pronounced me not guilty. Because he doesn't hold my sin against me. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Somebody say yeah. yeah. Romans 3 and 4. He says being justified, being justified, being, being made not guilty freely. Say free. free. See, I was, I was guilty. So that means I didn't have to pay no bails, bondman. 
Tell me to that. I didn't have to bond myself out. I ain't have to put no money up. I ain't have to put no money down. I ain't have to put my house up, my car up, or my Jeep, or my first two children down my grandchildren line. I was pronounced not guilty freely. Anybody here all right with that? He says freely by his grace. Now, these are things that really the, 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 the young believer doesn't quite understand. Say me to that. This stuff is not like history book kind of stuff. This is spiritual kind of stuff. And you have to understand through the, through, the, through the energy of the mind of the Holy Ghost to understand what type of documentation and what kind of process this is. Say amen to that. This is God now. See, the, diff the difficulty with us was it was a spiritual thing that had manifested itself in the earth. Say amen to that. But it was in the spiritual realm where it was going to be dealt with so that the, de the dealing with of it could manifest itself in the earth. So he said in the text, he said, we were freely justified by his grace. Say amen to that. Right. Watch, him, watch him. When it comes to being forgiven, there was, no, there was no entity on the planet or in the universe that could qualify. Watch this now. Now here it is. This, this is going to throw you for a loop. When God told Adam about the fruit, he says, Every tree in the garden, you shall freely eat. Right? He said, but the tree in the midst of the garden, don't eat that. Because the day you eat up that tree, you shall surely die. Now, now, Jesus was in the garden too. The tree of life. Say amen to that. The tree of life. You can eat off that tree. Had Adam ate off that tree, instead of the other tree, we'd be singing a different tune right now. I wish I had a witness. But because of trickery, see, man, God gave him a choice. All the trees in the garden, freely eat. But the tree in the midst, I'm going to tell you where it is. See, man, I'm not hiding it. You need to know all the choices. I'm going to tell you where it is. But the day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. Now, here comes the enemy. Here comes the enemy focusing on one tree. I mean, God has given him permission to eat from any tree. That's the same thing with us. Why does he always come makes me focus over what I don't have instead of, because he don't want you to focus on what you're doing. Now, if you think about it, he's the devil. He can't help you focus on what God has for you. He got kicked out of heaven. He may. Well, do the best you can. Say amen now. He's mad. Now, getting mad at God doesn't give him anything. You can't whip him no matter what you do, no matter what you do. you know. And you also know that he lets you stay loose so he can use you to do his thing. So all you got devils in you, you can't hurt me. You can't hurt me. You can't hurt no believer. You ain't got no word you can speak on nobody. You ain't got no prayer you can pray over me. You better best leave me alone. Because I can pray over you. So he said, say me to that. I speak a word and God will do that. You're you, you going to speak a word and make God do something bad to me when his word said he won't. So you got more power than God. You have lulled yourself into an epitome of stupidity. Say me to that. Somebody going to hate me after today. Say me to that. Now, now, so, so, now, so, so the record, say reconcile, comes with a job. First as a ministry, and then I'm supposed to serve the word. Say amen to that. If some of us could serve the word, right, if we let our mouth be the mouthpiece of service for the word, and then shut it on everything else, it would be a whole better lot situation. Glory be to God. In verse number 20 of the text, Paul writes, now then, when, what does he say? Now is the same now that you hear in uh, Hebrews when it says, now faith. The minute you become reconciled, this kicks in. Now then, you are, say I am, an ambassador for who? Understand this. The reconciliation was done by Christ. The change was done by Christ. Uh, the, the righteous, all of it is done by Christ. Say amen to that. Who was it done by? Doesn't it make sense that I would serve the one who did it? Say amen to that. It doesn't make sense for Christ to reconcile me, save me, change me, do all of that. And I'm going to go off and serve somebody else. 
I don't owe them anything. I owe him everything. See the, the simplicity of it? Uh-oh, here's another news flash. Here's another news flash for you. Watch this. When I learn, when we learn to keep our focus on who's helped us, then he can use us to help someone else. Say amen to that. So he says in the text, he says in the text, he says, now then, we are who? Say, somebody say ambassadors. ambassadors. Uh, you know, on TV, you see an ambassador, they drive a big limousine. You know, they got their black suits and all that kind of stuff on their men and women. And they, but they, 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 all ambassadors for the United States serve in other countries. All ambassadors for other countries serve in the United States. Right? Because they are ambassadors. They are, they are delegated dignitaries of the country they come from to bring about the word of their leader to the country they're being ambassadors to. Mm -hmm, you missed that. They are all dignitaries. But they come from another country and they are to serve in a country that they come from bringing the message of their leader from the country they come from to the country they're serving in. You miss it again. Say, man, I'm waiting. Somebody out of screen. Say, see, so, so the idea then, he says this, so the ambassador is defined as an agent of the highest rank. Say highest rank. You're the highest ranking official God has on the planet. Now, guess what you're not, everybody think I'm, I'm making a mistake because I talked about titles. The, the, the title stuff ain't the rank. There's a difference between rank and title. I wish I had a written. <laughs> the highest rank you have on the planet is a child of God. That trumps everything. So all you folk who want to be the evangelists and the prophets and stuff, I'm just going to be a child of God. Say amen. That's the rank right there. Say amen to that. It's a person that's of the highest rank assigned to where? Foreign where? Foreign government. Now watch this. Here we go. Say news flash. All right, you thought you were here and you're supposed to be living according to the government that's already here. No. Now, let me see if I can help us understand it. When you got born again, say amen to that, your official birth record will change. For instance, like me, my, my earthly birth record says I was born in Valdosta, Georgia, Lowndes County. Say amen to that. But there is another birth certificate. When I was born again, uh, I don't know how God did this. one of the beautiful things about God. I don't, I don't try to figure it out. I just know that, say amen to that, I hold a dual citizenship role. But my number one citizenship now is in heaven. But I've been dispatched here. Say amen to that. You know why? Nobody in heaven needs to know what I got to say up there. Ain't no preaching in heaven. Ain't nobody getting no laying on hands on sick in heaven. Why? There's no such thing as this in heaven. The only problem heaven had was Lucifer, and he got kicked out. Say amen to that. So now, now I become a dignitary for Christ. Watch this now. Watch this. Hang on. Newsflash. Jesus sits at the right hand of God. Say amen to that. He's not coming back to earth until he comes to take me home in the rapture. Until then, he sits at the right hand of God, the place of fulfillment, because he fulfilled everything God had. He fulfilled everything God wanted to do. So he sits at the right hand. He sits at the right hand. He's not coming to be an ambassador. He's not coming to evangelize. He's not coming to lay hands on all the things. Only thing Jesus is going to do is sit up there at the right hand, and God has given me permission as an ambassador to use his name to make happen in this earth what I need to take place. The Spirit of God don't function unless I say in Jesus' name. He's been programmed. Don't you do a thing. Don't you do a thing. Don't you reveal a thing. Don't you become anything for them unless they qualify you to do it by mentioning Jesus. Not mention you, mention Jesus. I wish I had a witness. So he says in the text, now then we are ambassadors for who? Christ. Say amen to that. We do all this for Christ. We go through it for Christ. We make it happen for Christ. 
We do what he calls us to do for Christ. Say amen to that. Because he did it for us. Does that help anybody? Glory be to God. Now he says the text, now then, through the through, uh, 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 ambassadors for Christ, as though God, he says, we kind of like as God was begging you through him, come to me. Come on home to me. Come on. That's, Paul, that's how Paul describes it. He says, God, this be. So he said, Paul says, he is beseeching you by us. Say amen to that. The next time you tell somebody, say, you know what, that, that the power of God is unctioning me to tell you about the reconciliation process. Why? Because God ain't going to tell you. He's going to put it on me to tell you. Mm. He says, he says in the text, he says, we pray you or we acknowledge you or we admonish you in place of Christ because he ain't here. Then he says in the last part of the text, be ye changed to God. Change your mind towards God. Change your attitude towards God. Change your perception of God. Change your perception of who God has saved you or the process God has used to save you. Change yourself to God. I wish I had a witness. Well, I thought God's supposed to change me. No, he'll change you. You're going to be mean until you decide not to be mean. Yeah, you decided to be mean. But you don't know what they did to me. I know what they did to you, but you still had a decision to make if you were going to be mean. And you chose to be mean because it made you feel good. Well, do the best you can. Verse number 21, here it is, the last part of the process. He says, for he, this is God. Now, this is God. Who did it all? Christ. God used Christ to do it all. See, God don't hang on trees. Say me to that. See, I... One thing about the church, we don't know how to separate Father, Son, Holy Spirit when needed to. They are three in one, but they function individually, but they function so well individually, it's like one person is functioning. So when you think about Jesus, you have to think about God as Son. And when you think about Spirit, now you got to think of God as Spirit. See me there? Because God is a Spirit. God never changed from being a Spirit. He's always a Spirit. But the word Jesus, which was in word form first, and then in flesh, and now he exists in celestial in the right hand, right hand of God. I wish I had a witness. Say amen to that. Yeah, you see, Jesus left the earth on a cloud. Spirits don't ride clouds. And when the Bible says when Jesus comes, we don't know what he's going to be like, but we're going to be like him. That means we're going to have a celestial body. We ain't going to go back to being spirit. We're going to be celestial in heaven. That's a whole nother teaching, so I won't charge you for that, but you can put 25 bucks in the collection plate when you go out. Say amen to that. Now, say amen to that. Y'all all right? I'm just I'm, I have a good time when I'm preaching. I have a good time when I'm preaching. Say amen to that. Now, so he says then, so here's God. So here's God. Here's God. Now, God has to, there's a word, there's a text, there's a word in the Bible that, call, that is called scapegoat. Scapegoat. It has the idea, the idea of, it has to do with, Blaming something on someone who didn't really do it, but you're going to use them as a scapegoat because you can. Say amen to that. But, you know, isn't it great that if God wants to use me as a scapegoat, that's a good thing? But now watch this. He wouldn't use me as a scapegoat, which I was the goat. I was a goat before I became a sheep. Hey, see, that's what most churches always think you've been a sheep. No, you were a goat. You don't transfer from goat status to sheep status till you accept the shepherd. Boom! Say amen to that. Glory be to God. I'm preaching now, man. So he says in the text, so God, God needed a what? A scapegoat. Somebody he could put the blame on who really didn't do the crime. So here he goes. David would have been a good choice. Kill Goliath. But he had a little problem, say many of that one time, so that disqualified. And then Moses was a good guy, but you know, everybody God used on the planet did not qualify as a scapegoat. But he could use them to prepare the way for the scapegoat. So even a scapegoat, God's got a purpose for. I wish I had a witness. Here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. In verse 21 of the text, you've heard this all your life. For he who knew no sin, say amen to that, became, he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the, 
of God in him. Here it is. God said, I got to get, I got to have a scapegoat. So what you going to do, God? I'm going to have to do what I always do. Make me one. I'm going to make me one. Yeah. God's, God's, his perspective is, I can see him now. Well, I'm going to have to do like I did everything else. When I wanted the world from chaos to beautiful, I had to make it. Say amen to that. When I wanted Jesus born on the earth, I had to make it happen. Uh, everything God says I had to do, I had to make it happen. So the scapegoat business ain't nothing. I'm going to have to make that happen too. Then he says in the text, he said now, but now the difference is, the difference is, right? See that, see, he says, for he has made him to be sin for us. See, God's like this. He said, I got to make it happen. See, but I'm not mad at Jesus, and I'm not mad at my creation. I'm pissed off with sin. That's who I'm mad with. I ain't mad with you. That's why you be the man, I thank God. God ain't got time to be mad with you. If God were mad at you, who going to help you? If God was mad at you, who going to deliver you? If God was mad at you, who going to set you free? See, never equate God to being like you or me. God doesn't get mad at his creation. He gets mad at what makes his creation fall short. Am I talking to anybody? So God was not mad. He was not mad at Adam. He was not mad at Eve. He wasn't mad at David because he called David a man after my own heart. Say amen to that. And to this day, he has not changed his mind. He wasn't mad at anybody. On, he wasn't mad at Jezebel. He wasn't mad at Jezebel. God never gets mad like you think. There is a side of him called wrath, but it's justifiable. Say amen to that. It's justifiable. God doesn't sit up one day and see you walk in church and don't look right and get mad. That's how we do it. I don't like the dress you had on the day. I don't like the suit he went. That's probably all they had. I still don't like it. They ought to go buy something different. So I'm mad. God was never mad at his creation. God was highly mad with sin. Say amen to that. And watch it. And because we've been reconciled, we really don't have a right to be mad with each other. I got no reason to be mad at you. What am I getting mad at you for? I got no reason to be mad at you. Mad at you about what? You, we waste more of our time letting our emotions dictate how we're going to deal with each other as opposed to dealing with them according to the Spirit of God in us. Everybody going, yeah, amen, but I mean, God is watching, and God knows. Say amen to that. Watch the text. For, and I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. Amen to that. Okay, oh, he says that. For he has made him to be what? See the exchange? There is grace again, right? Now, here it is. You think Jesus had to give up divinity to come to earth. Say amen to that. But then after 33 years, and then on the 33 year, the last days on this planet, then God decides I'm going to turn him into sin. Why? I got to kill sin. I got to kill it. I can't kill it unless it manifests itself. And the only way it can manifest itself, it's got to be put on what let it in. Flesh let it in. Oh, 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 did I lose you? Flesh, Adam, let it in. Say amen to that. But Adam don't qualify to become it because he is it. A house divided against itself cannot stand. So sin does not carry enough weight to be destroyed of itself. It can never destroy itself. The only thing who can destroy sin is righteousness. Say amen to that. But in order for sin to be destroyed, it's got to be put on something that's opposite itself. So God made Jesus become sin for me. Now, I was sinful. It's someone, oh, I wish I had it with you. Come here, Cam. Come here. Come here, Cameron. Hurry up. Come on. You know you want to come down here. Come on. Come on. Come here. Well, it was cold this morning. Was it cold to you this morning? Yeah, turn around. Turn around. Take this off. Watch the text. He had made him to be sin for me. Who knew no sin? That's not me. That's Jesus. Who knew no sin? So he made him to be sin 
for me. It's almost like God sitting there, say, 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 Pastor, I'm cold. Say, I'm really cold. Say, don't you see me shaking? <laughs> say, 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 I'm, say, I'm shaking really good, Pastor. Say, I need something to keep me warm. Say, Pastor, I'm going to get a cold if you don't do something. So he made her warm when she couldn't be warm herself. She's standing there shaking. And everybody said, move around, do this. No, she needed, she needed something to make her warm because she could not do it herself. So the Bible says, God says, he, he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Now watch this. So, so here's God. Thank you, baby. So here's God. He, took, he takes Jesus. Say Jesus. Now this is, this is going to knock you down. This is going to knock you down. He takes Jesus, right, and he puts him on a cross, right? He uses the hands of other men to nail him. Say amen to that. You know, they, they were just nailing and God was like, yeah, nail him good now. Make sure you nail him good. Then he used a guy to pierce him in the side. Then he used another guy to put a crown of thorns upon his head. Here's God up here. He's just activating all these people. Do this, do that. And the devil ain't got nothing to do with this. You don't think the devil had anything to do with this. Ain't no devil put Jesus on the cross. He would be crazy to put him on the cross knowing what he was going to do. This was God. This was God doing this. His own son. Say amen. So he put him on the cross. Once he gets him on the cross, it would be really good if he's, oh, no, no, this, that, and the other, this, that, and the other. Then there's a clause in the Bible where Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When all the promises in the word of God says he would never leave, he would never forsake me. Why have you forsaken me? So the, so the quandary is now, did God forsake Jesus? The answer is no, because he can't go back on his word. Then what did God forsake? He, was, he forsook what he made Jesus to be, sin. It's legal to turn your back on sin. He turned his back on what he had made Jesus become. Because God says he's holy, so therefore everything about me is holy. I'm not turning my back on my son. I'm turning my back on what I made him to be, sin. Why? Because I got to kill sin. I got no love for sin. I got no use for sin. So if I turn my back on sin, that's legitimate. But I never turn my back on the person who did the sin. Do the best you can with that. See, that's why I like that. that that's one simple reason why religious people get on my nerves. Trying to make you conform to a standard they set. Trying to make you conform to an image they want you to have. Say amen to that. Next time that happens, say, I want to know. To help a sister out, help a brother out. Did you become sin for me that I might be the righteousness of God? And the answer going to be no. Then say, why are you trying to put all your requirements on me instead of letting God tell me what I need to do? Woo! So he, he says in the text, he says, for he had, y'all get it? So he made, he made, 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 say made. I mean, he didn't have it, so he had to make it. He made him to be sin for us who knew what? Now, you're talking about a God. Now, watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Here's it is. Here it is. Here it is. God knows everything, but he doesn't know about sin. He knows of sin, but he don't know about sin as it relates to participating in sin. Jesus did no sin. Didn't even know sin had a name. Now, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Pastor, wait a minute. Yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. He knew no sin, had no acquaintance with sin, had no participation in sin. That's what qualified him to become sin. Say amen to that. Who knew no sin that we might be what? See the trade-off? See the grace of God? Here's Jesus again. Without me becoming what you have done, you have no shot at becoming righteous. Now, watch this. Watch this. He was poor. He made himself poor so I could be rich. Grace of God. Yeah. Through his poverty, I might be made. God is looking for somebody to break off. Yes, yes, yes. I'm ready. Say amen to that. He has made himself poor so that through his poverty, I might be made rich. Mm. And not only that, right, right? 
he has become a curse for me. Because curse is everyone that hangs on a tree. All right. <laughs> All right. And, and, and now today, he has declared me reconciled through Christ with the ministry of reconciliation. He has reconciled me through Christ with a word of reconciliation. Then he made me an ambassador without a formal program. Say amen to that. And, and, and how do you do it? Now he takes Jesus, makes him what I had committed, and then out of him becoming what I was and being put to death on the cross, now I can reciprocate the process, right? I can become the righteousness of God. Now here's, here's the killer. Here's the killer. Not the killer. Here's the wake-up call. Say wake-up call. Somebody say wake-up call. Say wake-up call. Don't you ever again mention out of your mouth, I'm a sinner saved by grace. You're not. You got saved. That's over with for you. For you and I, you know what sin is now? When I allow myself to miss the scope of what God has intended for me. Ow, me! Amen. Running around here. We all just sinners saved by grace. I'm walking out now. I'm leaving now. No, I'm not. I'm not. He had made him to be sin for us. He who knew no sin. That we might, see that word made? That we might be what? Made the what? The righteousness of God. Or the justified by God. Say me to that. So next time somebody says, hey, young baby, I'm the righteousness of God. You can't claim to be no right. Yes, I can claim to be the righteousness of God. If I can't claim it, who can? It's for somebody to claim. I'm going to let it be me. See, because once, watch this now. The power of life and death is in my, not my fingers, not my eyes. What would happen if I start calling myself what I actually am? If I stop saying I'm just a sinner saved by grace and start saying, no, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What would that do to my attitude? What would that do to my actions? What would that do to my perception of who God says I am? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say me now, now, out of all that we've talked about, I said four weeks of teaching, right? We don't owe one, body, one somebody among us anything, Amen. but we owe Christ everything. What we owe each other is the right to be loving toward each other because he was loving toward us. Amen. Say amen to that. Say amen to that. For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew, he who knew no sin, that we might be, say made. Now, no, sometimes the righteousness slip and fall, but they can always get up. As long as you can get up. Watch it. You ever notice God is not an Indian giver, so to speak. That's not a slur. Indian giving implies someone who gives something and then takes it back. We are very good at that. I ain't giving that church no more of my money. I'm going to take my money back. Indian giver. Say amen to that. God is not like that. God never gives anything and takes it back. Sometimes we look at people and what they do and God don't know. No, no, no. See, we still can't see what we need to see in people to make decisions concerning them in their relationship with God. So he says in the text that I might be made. Now, so he said, sometimes the righteousness slip and fall. Sometimes the righteousness falls and the pity they can't get up. But there's no such thing as can't. First John 1 9 says, if you slip and fall, confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive you your sin. He'll forgive you, but he won't change your title. Your title don't change. Because if, if, if God starts calling you something you're not, then that makes God a liar. God does not take back what he's given. He just forgives nothing. He forgets Now, this is what blows our mind again. I'm about done. I declare you. This is what blows our mind again. I can't stand the fact, I'm just generally talking, that God forgives you for this and gives you for that and gives you for this and this, that, and the other. And for this and that and that. The implication is that you are just perfect. That's what you're saying. No, I ain't perfect, but I don't do that. Watch it. Sin is spelled. S-I-N. And Jesus became S-I-N. It didn't say God said, you just be a liar, forget everything else. No, he became S-I-N. And everything that was associated, everything that was related with 
got nails in his hand, nails in his feet, pierced in the side, and died. And died. So as far as God is concerned, I've done what I need to do. Sin is dead. Now, here's a, here it is. Say newsflash. Why am I committing what's dead? Why am I still holding an allegiance to something that's dead? If I hold allegiance to something that's dead, I'm supposed to be alive. I can't really make that mix. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. There it is again in him, Jesus. See, my righteousness stands alone, is alone, inside Christ. And as long as I'm in Christ, I'm the righteousness of God. I got one more thing to tell you, then I'm going to let you go. Because I am the righteousness of God. Say it. Say, because I am the I dictate policy for God in the earth. That's what makes me a child of God. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Come on, somebody. Say amen to that. Say amen to that. I'm the righteousness of God. That means God has given me permission to dictate policy on his behalf and on behalf of the kingdom of heaven. Where? In this earth realm. In this earth. In this earth. Jesus paid it all. There's a song that says, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left, that is, a crimson stain. Sin had left a stain that only the blood of Jesus. Now watch. It says, sin had left a crimson stain. What color is crimson? Right? What color was the blood of Jesus? Sin had left a stain that only the blood of Jesus could remove. Why? Because that's what God required. Wasn't the devil. Devil never held a ransom on you. You know what I mean? God set the price for your emancipation. God set the price for your deliverance. God set the price for your redemption. It was always his son, Jesus Christ. Say amen to that. Reconcile. Righteous. Reconcile. Righteous. And in the middle of that, between reconciliation and righteousness, there are some things God requires of me. Right. Watch this. Not just because he requires them. In God's mind, said, this is the deal. It makes sense to me that if somebody did all that for you, you would want to serve them. Who else, you, who else could you serve? He said, he said no, right. this, is, this is the spirit of God said. When you take all the spiritual out of it, when you stop trying to be so holy, when you stop trying to look at it from the, from the eyes of Isaiah the prophet and all those kind of things, just look at it plain. Look at it like a first grader would look at it. I want some Cheerios and they need milk. Say me to that. Stop trying to be so theological and just look at it logically. Say me to that. If I was lost and couldn't be found, if I was dying and couldn't help myself, if I had a need and couldn't fulfill it, then somebody came along and did all three. Say amen to that. Why would I run off and serve somebody who didn't? If Jesus paid it all, why am I trying to serve somebody else who didn't pay it all? It would be the same. If the same. Since the enemy caused me all my problems, why well, keep serving him? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Say me to that. But the nails, the spear, the crown of thorns, and then the death, dying, 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 dying. But on the third day, to get up, not with all power. Only man on the planet in history that ever became sin, pronounced sin guilty, died, buried sin, and then come out on the other side of that thing on the third day. And now there was nothing left for Jesus to conquer. He had conquered death, hell, and the grave. 
So there's no need to be afraid of any one of them because he's defeated them all. And where does he sit? At the right hand of God the Father. That's a good place to sit down. The right hand of God the Father indicates to Jesus the work's finished. Ain't nobody else coming along need to do nothing for you. There's nobody coming along need to do anything. There's no more required of you. When you accept Christ, you accept all that comes with Christ. It ain't no accept Christ and then do this, accept Christ and then do that. It's none of that. It's just accept Jesus by faith and believe that God is raising from the dead. And the Bible declares you shall be saved. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. You know, like I said, these last four teachings, I believe, is kind of prepping us for the new year. Same into that. You know, when you're, when you're a pastor, sometimes you get the, God shows you things you really don't want to see. You know, you try to hide, you know. But sometimes you see, you see people allowing circumstances that they're supposed to be walking on, walk on them. Say amen to that. And the reason it walks on them is because their perspective of who they are, of who they are in Christ Jesus, has not really taken root in them. Say amen to that. That has, and that does have to be developed. It has to be developed. But I can tell you one thing that helps the process. Whatever you've gone through, whatever you've been through, whatever was done to you, all of that, that you need to let go. You need to let that go. If it means forgiving whoever did it, do it. Your freedom is more important to you than holding them hostage or holding yourself hostage. Say amen to that. So the idea is, that, again, these teachings to help us understand what Christ has done for us. Say amen to that. Because as the new year comes in, I want to hit the ground running in who I am, not who I was. Amen. That's who I Amen. Come on, get a Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You may be here today. And after the word has been preached uh, and gone forth, you, you sense the spirit of God is now t tugging on you to give your life to Christ. If that's you, we're going to give an opportunity to that. Or you may be here today and you're out of fellowship with God for whatever reason. Or maybe people in the church or whatever the case may be. But the Bible declares that 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and then purify you from all unrighteousness. So if you're here today... Uh, also, if you're here today, you want to become a part of this body of believers. Say amen to that. But you can actually learn the word of God and learn how to put it into practice in your everyday living. If that's you from wherever you are in the building, as the choir stands and gives us a short number, perhaps there's one today who wants to come and give their life to Christ, someone who wants to come back to Christ, someone who wants to become a part of this body of believers. If that's you from wherever you are, just make your way down front. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Come on now. Right. You made me. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Let me tell you. Is there anyone else? For salvation, restoration, or to become a part of this body of believers? Anyone else? Say amen to that. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you so much. You may be seated. Put your hands together. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I heard um one of my friends one time. He's uh, uh he 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 belongs to a church in Georgia, and he says that that pastor, uh, when he he gave the invitation and people will come. And nobody was saying, he stopped the service and said, wait a minute, what's wrong with y'all? He said, we cheer football games, we cheer, this, we cheer when our children make a touchdown. When he says, he says, scripturally speaking, when a child of God comes home, he said, that should be a roar. That should be a roar that heaven hears. Why? One sheep has found its way back home. You know what I find out? So he says, I, I was like, so what, I wanna, you know, sometimes when I am not experiencing the fullness of what God has for me, it's kind of difficult for me to get excited about somebody who comes in. 
I wish I had a with it. So now you got some else to train yourself. I got to get excited when people come to Christ. Say amen to that. I got to get excited. I got to learn how to get excited anymore instead of sitting there. I got to get excited about when people come to Christ. Say amen to that. Come on, get a Lord a mighty hand clap or pray. Stand to your feet and get a Lord a mighty shout. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Okay, sit down before you fall down. Hallelujah. Glory be to 